good evening and we hope that you do have a good evening because this is the arena blues night and as you probably know the blues has many different forms very many different styles there are many different artists in it we've got most of them on the show tonight sonny boy williamson muddy waters joe turner there billy holiday big bill brunsey bessie smith all great performers but we're particularly pleased that we've got here with us in the studio to be our guide throughout this blues night a man who's been called the king of the blues a man who actually began as a boy picking cotton in mississippi and now picks his guitar around the concert halls of the world, Mr. B.B. King. Oh, thank you, John. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me out. <laughs> well, when we were looking through the list of some of the films that uh, we're going to see tonight, uh, there must be a lot of names that you've worked with, or certainly people that you've known in your career. Oh, yes. Uh, two or three that you mentioned I have known, and one um, in particular that comes to mind is Sonny Boy Williamson. Mm. In fact, I have got my first break through him. In fact, um, as you mentioned, when I was on the plantation, I used to hurry in at noon because um, when we came in for lunch, Sonny Boy would come on at 12.15 from a radio station in Helena, Arkansas, I believe it was called KFFA. Is that a blues station? Uh, well, it actually was not a blues station, but they featured, it was a, um, a product called King Biscuit, King Biscuit Flour, if you will, <laughs> and it sponsored this program with Sonny Boy, and I think it was about 15, of, about 15 minutes yeah. of it, uh, Monday through Fridays. And, um, so he was on the radio, and you were still working in the fields? Still working in the fields, yeah. <laughs> but when I left, uh, oh, after maybe a couple of years, when I left Mississippi and went to Memphis, then I heard that Sonny Boy Williamson was then on a radio station in West Memphis, Arkansas, which is about nine miles from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and I felt like I knew it. Yeah. Well, you've obviously known him many. <laughs> I just saw him. He came over here, I think, uh, just over 20 years ago yeah. in the 60s when a lot of blues players coming over. I remember seeing him in the back room of a little club with the then unknown British rock band, The Animals, who oh, were yes, going to be very yes. big. <laughs> and uh, these white kids were playing away with him. And it was so wonderful to hear somebody you know, really doing the real thing. But, yeah. of course, he was very important to you, to yes. your career, at one specific time when you were actually an established player. Yes, because, uh, well, that leads me into this little bit I wanted to tell you about. Um, after coming to Memphis and hearing that he was over in West Memphis on this radio station, I hitchhiked over there, and, and I found him there, and I begged him to let me do a tune on the show, and he said, you sure you can do it? And he was a great big tall <laughs> fellow, man, with a great big nose, you know. And uh, one of those guys that, when he'd look at me, I felt like a little smaller each time. Anyway, he said yes, and I was so happy that he would let me go on the so show. So he let you go on the show live? And just yes, live, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I played a tune, and as fate would have it, he, the place that he normally played on the 16th Street, or at the 16th Street Grill there in West Memphis, he had another job that was going to pay him all oh, big money comparing to what he was making there. And he, after I played the tune, he liked it. So he called a lady, her name was Miss Annie, I can't remember what her last name was, of the 16th Street Grill, and he said, did you hear the boy on my show? And she said, yes. He said, well, I'm sending him there tonight. He didn't ask me. He said, I'm sending him <laughs> there tonight to play, and uh, if that's all right with you. And she said, yes. And that was my first break. So he gave you your first break, but he took the most money. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here he is now, Sonny Boy Williamson. Sonny Boy Williamson, they're glad he made it over to be on TV. I should imagine that was fairly heartfelt about being glad to be on TV. I mean, 20 years ago, would a guy like that have been on national TV in America? No, not hardly. I think the first that I ever saw on national TV uh, of that kind was Brown and McGee and Sonny Terran. That was oh, simply yes. because I believe Harry Belafonte at that time had a great uh, special going on, and he used, uh, had it not been him, I don't yeah. you know, think anybody else would have at that time. Yeah, and they were more sort of entertainers anyway, weren't yes, they? Yes, right, you know, right. That sort of thing. But I mean, despite the little bit of showbiz, the hat, and all that sort of thing when he was over here, getting back to the feel of the blues, I should imagine that sound that Sonny Boy Williamson made was pretty much like the original sound of the blues as well. That, that was it. That yeah. was it. Oh, baby, that yeah. was it, yeah. That's the feel of the blues, the, yes. the, the spirit of the blues, but on a practical level, the subject matter of the blues, 